Hey everyone, Sean here, and I'm once again back for uh, reviewing another episode of The Boys. Uh, this is episode seven, so we're right at almost at the end for the season, and then now, we're, and then we're gonna head to the the final season, sadly. But uh, this episode uh, actually was um, jam packed in some ways. Uh, I would like to at least talk about my sort of review uh, briefly without spoiling things, and then we'll go into spoilers quite a bit here. Um, a little more on the theory crafting and also corrections right from the last episode to, um, into here going into here so I do have my notes uh, so this time around I, I will be able to mention at least most of the things uh, I think in the, ep uh, the last episode review um, I you know left out at least some things and those some things were kind of important as well as the things were mentioned but anyways this episode was uh, jam-packed action-packed uh, as well um, I, I loved it. Uh, it featured um, Butcher and uh, Starlight, or Annie, excuse me, uh, you know, versus that would be the spoilers. So, yeah, uh, but very good fight, I thought. Very satisfying by the end. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. And then, of course, a lot of, uh, you know, just exhi ex uh, ex ex uh, exhibition, excuse me. And, you know, leading into, you know, other important bits as well. Of course, that's very spoilery. But um, this is just like, you know, another episode of The Boys. Now everything's like moving forward. A lot of side stories are coming to an end, and, um, including, um, you know, Frenchies and Kimiko's, I guess. And then, um, you know, it's all getting wrapped up. And even, uh, I would say, MM as well. So uh, those, are, those are like the, the minor spoilers I, I would like to... Uh, you know address for this part just you know just because it's hard to like not say those things in the review right portion of things uh but yeah i know i thought this was this episode was great uh more of the boys right and then um you know really, really not much to say without really going to spoiler territory so if i were to give it a rating i know again i know this is kind of trivial at this point probably like a 9 out of 10 really I really liked it I think I, at least deserves an 8 to say the least in my opinion just because of the gen uh, the action the sort of zaniness that uh, that comes with as usual you, you expect and sort of the juicy bits as well I mean all the revelations and all the the big scenes right you know that happened in this uh, episode the set pieces if you will um, I thought were great you know for a the boys episode so again um i say 9 out of 10 really at lowest would be an 8 so i'm gonna go into spoilers now so transition thing whatever <laughs> all right so episode 7 right we're getting close so obviously there are things wrapping up already so therefore that's why it was able to like kind of move forward you know it's not being slogged down at this point um you know including uh frenchy you know that's the uh one I would like to mention right away. Now, before I go into Frenchie stuff, the notes I have here is a little scattered, so that's why a lot of these spoilers are going to be out of order. So forgive me if, if that feels that way or if it feels a little more a little scatterbrained. But yeah, that's just kind of the nature of uh, my notes anyway for this time around. So yes, Frenchie is back. I was wrong about the uh, the theory that um, that Frenchie was going to be sent into Tech Knight's like prison system as a cool way to um, introduce it right to us the audience right and having Frenchie sort of like be like the the foot at the door sort of thing um, and and Frenchie will be like you know sort of like the main character for that little little bit there for that little bit of the story and then maybe perhaps you know uh, find a way to get out or uh, have some sort of miraculous thing happen I guess but, um, you know, it would have been cool to see, but, you know, probably a little difficult to cram in for the final episode. Especially by this point, having this to be the second to last episode. So it was a kind of unfortunate that uh, we missed out on that. See, that could have been, um, if this if, if this whole side story with Frenchie was, like, better written, I felt like they had, would have had more room for that stuff and probably would have been able to nail it, right, a little better for Frenchie. Because I, um, I will address it again. I felt like uh, the whole thing with Frenchie and Kimiko were very, um, like, out of nowhere. Like, I, I um, you know, I, I said it in the episode 6 review that I went actually back to watching season 3 
and I thought I was going to be wrong on some things, but actually, you know, it, it made it made things all the more right that Frenchie's and Kimiko's side story here is written rather so poorly. So, overall, unfortunately, the um, especially Frenchie is probably like the worst one, a uh, worst side story, just because it just didn't feel justified enough to be um, given time or screen time in this season, especially being the second to last season, right? So why waste time with Frenchie? And Kimiko, like again, like drag it on or whatever, right? We we were in season three. We were seeing them like together. They're starting to like you know starting to have a good relationship, you know, even better than ever. Really start to connect and everything. But at least by the time they did wrap up their sort of differences and problems or whatever, it did it, it didn't do it like in the worst way fashion. But I felt like I was kind of like rolling my eyes. Like this should have just happened. Um, in season three, by the end of season three, or or maybe like in episode two, even at best, around there. But yeah, I mean, that whole thing I felt like it was forced drama for something for Frenchie and Kimiko to go through, just because like, you know, yeah, Emmett, what Emmett was going through, what Annie was going through, even Huey, you know, felt a little more genuine, right, in a way. Um, but definitely the, the Frenchie and Kimiko stuff was just like kind of stretched, very stretched out thin, with thus making it the weakest one of the bunch. You know, if you were to put your finger through this, through the, the board uh, made up of uh, Frenchie and Kimiko's side story, it would snap right through because it just has no substance, no matter to it, right? So, um, but it's... Uh, seemingly wrapped up for the most part. The only thing that's like the loose end is the stuff with Nina, who was the like mob boss for the Rus the, the sort of like Russian mafia thing. She was like um, the go-to when Frenchie was a hitman. Uh, she had a lot of things for Frenchie to do, you know, and then like pretty much drive drove the fact that yeah, Frenchie is like you know this dog, this loyal dog that did everything um, he was told to do including killing people, including Colin's uh, parents or family. Thus, the whole Colin situation. Uh, that one's still up in the air, uh, speaking of which. So, um, Colin is still missing. Um, we don't know what's going to become of Colin. Um, he could be just out of the picture um, all in all. Or he, he could try to kill Frenchie or something. Um, but... You know, I don't, I don't think he'll like go to Frenchie to kill him. I think he 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 because he even said, um, you know, if you come near me, I'll kill you, or whatever. So I, there's no way he's gonna Frenchie's. There's no way Frenchie's going to find him unless they like run into each other somehow. Like I don't know, but um, that one also is uh, also up in the air as well as well as Nina. So maybe we need, the Nina situation will be addressed in season five as a way to uh, symbolize that Frenchie has completely overcome his sort of skeletons in the closet sort of thing at least uh with nina anyway so um but anyways uh yeah and then and then uh we got an insight on kimiko as to why she doesn't speak uh and that's pretty much because um you know she was pretty much forced to kill you know her fellow I guess assassins or just girls or whatever or just children who are trained to be or groomed to be assassins for um, the shining light or whatever and um, they had to be silent right as they were killing each other to see who's on who, who becomes the top or whatever and so whenever she tried to speak when told to she couldn't just at that point she's just so traumatized of being forced to kill you know, people around her age and stuff like that. You know, it, it's ob obviously that it is terrible too. But again, I felt like that should have been already addressed. And now this is n now becoming a thing at, at this point. You know what I mean? They should have been stomped or that hatchet, that hatchet should have been buried. There's still the girl, right, that was uh, going after Kimiko at some point. Um, I, I forget her name. But yeah, she's you know she speaks Japanese also. I think she's supposed to be a Japanese character, along with Kimiko, of course. But yeah, um, kind of just like eh, kind of just there for me. Unfortunately, I don't really care 
for her all that much as much as I do with Kimiko, obviously. But um, yeah, that's essentially why um, Kimiko is mute, is is the PTSD of having to kill, uh, you know, fellow children as they were forced to become uh, assassins, pretty much, trained to be assassins. But now it's really, I, uh, it, I forget if they really addressed um, whether like they they gave her um compound v or they found compound v and just like inject into her or something or i don't know they or yeah um or when at some point she was given the the compound v therefore her powers right all right so let's just um put that to the side for right now um if i have anything more to say about that but let's go on to webweaver right so webweaver was like the you know of course he's the spider-man parody the dark Spider-Man parody who loves to have enemas with heroin needles and stuff like that. Um, you know, one of those characters, yes, you expect in The Boys. Uh, Web Weaver uh, was set up to be the leaker. You know, um, since the leaker is still out there, right? Um, that's as they realized. And uh, they thought we Web Weaver was the leaker, and so... Um, they tried to get to the bottom of it, but last minute, Web Weaver was like, it wasn't me, but it was already too late because he was incompetent or not worthy to be around Homelander's eyes or whatever, so he just ripped them apart, fatality style, right? Something out of Mortal Kombat. Um, he pretty much did Shao Kahn's move, but just, just, just straight up just rip him in half, right? This way. It's, you know, not, not like a paper kind of thing but like just that and then I, I, I physically cringed at that personally <laughs> so man um so yeah th th that was uh, qu quite uh, squeamish it made me quite squeamish uh, as a number of things did in uh, season 4 but uh, I thought I'd just brought that up uh, bring that up just because it was um, you know them f realizing that yes, the the leaker is still out there, until at some point later on. Okay, so uh, let's get this one out of the way, which is uh the fight between Deep, uh, the Deep, no uh, Black Noir the second or Black Noir two, versus Annie and Butcher. That was awesome. I thought that was, that was an awesome fight. It it took place at the Flatiron or AKA the office, right? The headquarters for the boys or formerly, and uh, now they. Had to go somewhere else, but um, yeah, uh, man, that that office got destroyed, um, as expected. You know, having three soups right fighting and then one human, who knows how to fight soups, kind of. Um, man, like, but it, 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 uh, I honestly thought um, deep was going actually was going to meet his end, but um, not so much. But um, it did take the assistance of A Train, of all people, to come in and uh, basically um, help them out, especially uh, Annie. Um, I, it was pretty satisfying to see because you know you know you know that A Train hates the Deep, and you get to see more of his speed. You, you know, uh, fight as he fought uh, Deep. I thought Deep, honestly though, was going to put uh, keep up with uh, A Train just because of that first hit or or first whiff, I should say. He like somehow like anticipated the first one or just happened so to like move that way and then he misses. But then later on, he was starting to lose and um, he he loses the fight, unfortunately for the, for the D. Right. Um. Yeah, so Deep Deep gets his face smashed, kind of almost like um, uh, firecracker. But then, and he takes like one of the pl weight plates, like you know, like forty-five pounds or something, something heavy, and it's just boom. And then meanwhile, Butcher was fighting um, Noir, Black Noir, and Butcher was looking for um, he want he wanted to summon the tentacle tentacle thing or whatever. Um, in the manifestation known as Kessler, right, or Joe. Kessler, um, as we previously know, that he's 
not there. He's non-existent. He is essentially is like um, that one character from Fight Club and also um, also uh, Reznov, right? He just this non-existent manifestation in uh, Butcher's head thanks to the brain tumor caused by uh, Temp V, which probably has mutated thanks to uh, Compound V. But um, yeah, so Kessler didn't do anything, of course, because he is at uh, the, the this Kessler is at odds with uh, Butcher, right? And uh, even Annie caught some of that. He's like, "What? What is he talking about?" Right? And even uh, brought up um, Ezekiel. You know, that's how Annie was able to connect that situation. But no, none of that happened. Um, as A Train came in, uh, MM uh, blasted the shit out of um, Black Noir with the Gatling gun or minigun. Um, which I thought was funny because miniguns like that are supposed to be heavy. I don't think anyone is, is able to hold one, at least any normal human being anyway, but this is the boy, so whatever, right? Um, unless it was supposed to be like a miniature minigun, I guess, but I don't know, maybe like a handheld version, quote unquote, but I thought they were supposed to be impossible to carry, but anyway... Um, so I thought that was a pretty awesome fight. I loved it. Um, so Noir and Deep survived the fight, but lost. So, uh, I'll, I'll put that to the side. But before that, of course, before that fight, somewhere, um, the Deep had to let go of the octopus. So, kills her. It was, I, I, apparently her name was Ambrosius or something. Ambrosius? I, I, I want to take a shot of it, at it, but yeah, it's a little hard to say or remember. I'm terrible with names, so that, that was my best shot. But anyways, had to kill. Pretty much wanted to kill uh, kill her off because he thought Sage was into him more, and he felt more gratifying gratification being with Sage than he, he did with um, uh, the octopus. Even though the octopus gave him more more love than Sage could have uh, could have, because uh, and of course uh, Deep being stupid, he doesn't realize that you know what he's going through with Sage isn't really genuine. He's just, she's just using him as a means to um, help the lobotomy process and to um, kind of like. Um, have him have the uh, deep on her side kind of thing by giving him some sort of pleasure and you know to make him her ally like for sure but unfortunately that gets stopped uh, later on after that in fact after the fight but anyway um, deep chokes her out by just taking her out of the water right unfortunately which was pretty sad to watch Honestly, because he's just so stupid and so like oblivious to what's really going on because of his stupidity. So, yes, while yes, you know, the whole like humans with some sort of animal is gross of itself, you know, there is some fine lines to be read in between. And um, she kind of is right, I think, that Sage is just using him. And the octopus is the one that's genuine here. So it's like this weird sort of reversal, right? That we come to expect. Or um, in comparison to what we ex expect, I guess. So octopus is dead. Uh, Deep kind of has let go of that side at that point. So there's no like, um, there's no hiding anymore. Because there's no octopus. There's no hiding it from the seven. There's probably gonna be no scandal or some or whatever um, coming out of that. Okay, so I forgot to address this one. It should have been first, honestly, but uh, too low, low, low lazy on the uh, arrangement on my notes here because I, I actually wrote it out instead of like typing it out. That's how I, that's how old I am. Anyway, so 
um, this episode or this yeah this episode actually was taking place around Christmas, which is very strange. But okay, whatever. You know, we, I guess we had had some sort of Christmas episode at some point. But that may be due to the fact that um, you know COVID hit, right? So things got shifted around. So maybe the the Christmas episode might have been something for around that time or right into winter time. Who the hell knows, right? Um, but I, I just mentioned that just because you know that you know it, it was quite prominent throughout the show or throughout the episode. Um, let me see here. Um, right around that uh, beginning, Butcher comes forward, so he comes clean, tells the boys what he was doing, uh, including you know cap have um, Samir captive. Uh, cut off his leg and everything tried to make the virus right but the difference here is that he actually like gives them some information right not just like you know oh yeah you know I, I did this but instead he came out with some supplemental information telling them that the virus would not, would not have been enough for Homelander but rather than making a virus for Homelander so to say they could always just make the virus for the rest of the soups that they're fighting against, which I think I mentioned that somewhere in my video, but I'm still partially wrong on that part that um, that the virus was a no-go. That, yeah, it's a no-go for Homelander, but they're still going to use the virus for other soups, especially for someone like Newman. Newman is very deadly um, as a soup. Can blow people's heads off right without even being seen right as long as she sees you you're dead right within range but um yeah which is kind of like ironic because she was the one who like brought in the virus but now you know technic or um potentially that is going to uh, probably be used against her that would probably likely be her downfall is having the virus so um that is pretty much that on that part um so a bit of a correction there that the virus is still in play but it's not for homelander it is for everyone else and hopefully it won't uh somehow get get into ryan although uh, although my my theory on Ryan still also plays come into play with the you know him being immune, therefore you know not necessarily fall into the category of being affected by the virus. Um, okay, so early on or somewhere uh, in the early parts, they're about to do their mission or whatever. Uh, MM. Uh, well, they're they're going to do the mission of. Reconnaissance on uh, the Seven, right? Uh, Sage was like looking for an assassin, and then they're surveying the assassin. They wanted to check into his house, and um, uh, before that, though, MM is like, "I'm out. You go on. Butcher's a leader. I'm out because of what happened. He fainted, right? He had a panic attack." Um, this whole thing was putting his putting stress on him, right? So, figured that he would, it would be better for him to stay out of it. So, um, and then they go on to do their mission, and then so uh, they met up with the assassin, but not in the not in the, uh, in the pretty unexpected way. It turns out that the assassin is a sh shapeshifter of sorts. Uh, a little different from the one who was pretty much like giving Homelander pleasure, right? Because that shapeshifter did it on the spot. Um, original form is like more of a dude, whereas this one is more of a chick for right now. But her way of shapeshifting is very different. Um, she has to rip her old skin off to... Um, reveal her new one right of her choice 
but she has to come in contact with that person, of course. Probably the same, maybe with um, the first one. But I think the difference here is that she's able to maintain this form indefinitely, whereas um, the first one can only hold it for so long. So there are some trade-offs, pros and cons. Obviously, this one is pretty gross, pretty painful process, I, I'm sure. But um, when she overcomes those obstacles, she can maintain that form as long as she likes. Okay. Uh, so that is dealt with. Um, they tried to capture her or whatever, or get rid of her. That failed. Um, meanwhile, somewhere in the episode, uh, Sage is, was trying to cook up something for the Seven, as I was been saying uh, in, in, the, um, in the last episode, but more for her own for her own benefit than anything. But that gets um, thrown out of the window pretty much because Sage is out. She is out of the seven, uh, as told by um, Homelander. Homelander, um, after he realized that A Train is the real leak, uh, and this was after um, the fight with um, Annie Butcher versus uh, Noir and D. So they find out it was train, uh, A Train, not Web Weaver, Web Weaver, nor um, Cameron. And uh, they also find out that Sage knew that it wasn't a, or it, it that it that it was A Train, but it was all part of her plan, giving purposefully um, A Train misinformation, quote unquote, her words. So maybe she also is lying there. Who knows? But supposedly it was all part of her plan. But it involved with not telling Homelander. And Homelander, you know, you can't tell secrets or anything like that. He didn't like that. So he's like, no secrets. So you're out. Right? You, um, That sort of thing. And Sage um, essentially is like, yeah, you know, whatever. Go ahead and surround yourself with some yes men. People like uh, Firecracker, for example. Right? So, while Sage is out of the seven, she's not out of the picture completely. She might, I don't know, either turn to the boys, right? right you know, be a, I guess, um, the enemy of the enemy of an enemy of uh, is my friend kind of thing, or she'll be a, a a completely like separate group or faction with her own plans that she'll probably go forward with. I don't know either that or she's out of the picture completely which I don't think is the case I think she'll meet her in somewhere um and maybe I mean I don't know maybe she'll she will help out the boys at some point we don't know okay so okay so we already talked about Frenchie and Kimiko's story being wrapped up seemingly so that's out of the way Newman and, and Huey. Okay, so Huey meets up with um, with Newman as she is, you know, winding up to become vice president officially. She, she is an elect. Um, Huey tried to help Marriott by just talking, trying to trying to talk her out of what she's doing. They're still friends somehow. Or on friendly terms ish, or friendly enough to be talking to each other. Despite Huey throwing acid at her and uh, failed miserably. <laughs> and um, uh, pretty much like uh, try his best, nothing happened. But she also says, you know, I'm sorry about your father and stuff like that. Um,. See now with that, hmm, right. Seems like I don't know. Is Huey gonna be the one to kill her or de deliver to the virus to her? I don't know. Who the hell knows? So that one's a little more hard. But I will. I would like to try to craft some theory out of that one, but it's hard to say really. Okay, 
So, um, oh, right. So there, there were other things, right? So MM stays, right? He said he was leaving, but then uh, A Train intervened. He's like, he, 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 you know, he did all this stuff only for MM to leave, and then MM's like, you know, you know, I'm out, right? Whatever, blah blah. blah. But A Train pretty much tells him, right, like, like. Yeah, you can leave, but Homelander's gonna go after you, right? Like you, you think you're gonna be safe in uh, um, Belize or whatever? He is going to go after you, and you will, ha uh, you and your family will be killed, right? If unless you do something. So that's why MM comes to terms and accepts the fact that yeah, you know, this ain't gonna be it. So he stays while um, Janine and his wife or his uh, loved one um, leave for Belize I guess but MM stays thus um, what happened with um, uh, which we'll call the fight between yes you know the four the two one the 2v2 fight right and that's where he came in with the uh, the, the minigun stuff like that that butcher tried to get his hands on Okay, so um, I believe both. No, this was after this one was after the fight, and this is the stuff between Ashley and A Train. Now, I would understand if people think, "Oh, there might be some relationship going on with Ashley and A Train." I think they just have common things. I don't think that uh, they have mutual respect in a way. Um, I think this will be just like a very, like, not platonic, but, um, you know, respectful relationship at the most, where, um, A-Train and Ashley have something, and they're pretty much, be well, are both in trouble, and they are kind of, like, trying to look out for one another, pretty much, because they have, they know they're both dead if they screw up one another. Um, so A Train tries to uh, snap Ashley out of this whole CEO thing, but Ashley s still says she can't out of fear and probably like that power complex, right? She has a complex where she still feels like she's at power being a CEO and all, but she's a puppet CEO, oh, at least at, or at least at some point. Now that Sage is gone. Ash is probably back being the official CEO. Or whatever. And uh so so Ashley stays. But she knows that yeah, she's been thinking about it too. She want you know, she's been getting calls from Disney and they wanted to hire her as CEO at some point, but she says she can't because of um what Homelander could do to her potentially or bot could do to her potentially right but a train leaves so he's out pretty much and who knows if he is uh, officially part of the boys or he's just by himself uh looking out for his family you know his brother and um his nephews right that or um um he's probably joined up with the boys at least for a little bit so I don't, don't I personally don't think it will be some sort of relationship between those two. I think at best it's a, it's a mutual relationship. At, uh, at best. Um. So we we already covered Atrium being an ally definitely. Um. Let me see. So. Yeah, Ashley stays. We just mentioned that. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, a train helping out mm as well yes we covered that okay so pretty much um one of the last parts right um was with ryan so throughout the the episode right you know as it's being christmas right they had the muppet little thing going on and ryan was supposed to like take part of it um uh, and this time this was actually um by Homelander, right? He, the Homelander told him to 
do it pretty much you know he, he wants him to stick it out despite him you know despite last episode or whatever he, he like you know um him seemingly let go of his like humanity or whatever but you know um i guess with the whole thing with firecracker that kind of got gets shot down you know so that's why like he essentially goes back like he just reverts back to him himself pretty much it's it's that thing that mechanism the programming that he's just just cannot overcome unfortunately despite going down the lab killing all those people right you know as a symbol of like seemingly him letting go of that or over overcoming it but he just has not overcome that and so he forces Ryan to stay on the show or whatever. But Ryan is just like, no. He, you know, still loves his mom. He still loves Butcher, right? He sees him as like a second father, a surrogate father. So um, he just um, pretty much like respects his mother like m more in that scene. And, always, you know, uh, living by her wishes by um saying like always be truthful with yourself or whatever so ryan just walks out he's like no i'm, I'm done with this now i don't know if he walked out from the show or just or walked out uh, out of the whole vaught thing the celebrity life um but and of course uh homelander saw that it was publicly broadcasted so everyone saw that so who knows what will, will take place in the last episode um this could be a sign that Ryan has ha starting to have enough and we are going to towards the theory that um, Ryan is going to be the one to kill Homelander because he has you know of course he he kind of is like the su successor for for Homelander so maybe so hopefully that will be the case it makes sense that makes the most sense since the virus is out of the picture for Homelander so the only thing is like yeah Ryan has to uh, be the one himself to take out Homelander. Be the key. He is the key. Right. In that process, um, Butcher, MM, and Annie were all at the bar. After that fight, tried to drink it out. Um, and then, you know, uh, Hulk, uh MM uh, walks uh, walks away for a moment to make a call to tell uh, his loved one that he um, is going to stay, and you uh, and you know he's telling them to go to Belize without him for right now because this ain't over, and it won't be over if he walks out of it. It'll only like make it worse in a way. So it, it's kind of like all it's, it's it is repeating some of things, but I, I I would still like willing to um, tolerate it, just because of everything else. But hopefully this will be the last time that you know yeah ho uh, mm will do that. So hopefully um that all that is done. Uh and then somewhere no no oh no 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 I'm sorry. Um, after that, um, I believe, see, the order was a little weird for me, like, was Annie there during the scene with the leg? But no, but anyway, let me just talk about the leg, though, man. I, oh, man, I was, I was kind of scared for Kimiko, because, um, Frenchie and Kimiko were, uh, uh, keeping an eye out on Samir. Samir made the virus in the, and, um, it was all in that that needle but he um seemingly or somehow was able to get out the chains and shackles and stabs um kimiko with it right injecting the virus and it was going it was working and so uh frenchie acted quickly um what do you call it he uh belted off the leg and then amputated with a saw <laughs> Um, another squeamish scene, but yeah, gladly, um, the leg was amputated, Kimiko was okay, but man, I was fucked up, man, shit, <laughs> oh boy, 
But um, yes, the the virus is still for um, Newman. Even though, like, yeah, like um, some years, like you know, uh, please, you know, Newman, uh, please keep her safe or whatever, blah blah blah. Um, although, even though, like, yeah, he thought, um, well, he thinks the virus is for Homelander. I think, anyway. But probably in the back of his mind, he may think also, yeah, this is probably gonna be used for Newman or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Because why, why would he do it in the first place? Anyway. Um, it's meant for Newman, really. But, anyway. So, Butcher and the rest of them find out, I think. At least, Butcher and M.M. I don't know if Huey was around. I forget. I don't know if uh, any was around. That's a little hard to remember. Um, but, yeah. They're like, okay. like It's really time to move forward. Let's get to work, right? You know? Uh, and then, meanwhile... Um, well, yeah. So they had to get the virus out of the leg first. And then, you know, move forward. Anyway. So, and then, uh, this, I believe, is the very last scene. Uh, Annie is captured. So, it turns out that during Annie um, drinking with um, M.M. and Butcher, she wanted to go to the bathroom uh, while M.M. was making a call. I guess she was making, uh, she, was, she wanted to use the bathroom, whatever it was, for reasons. Um, or whatever for whatever reason she wanted to use the bathroom, <laughs> and uh, the shapeshifter uh, was around. Uh, she used another form to take a selfie with Annie, so that she can contact come in contact with Annie. Um, but yeah, but not before capturing her or kidnapping her by using the uh, some sort of gas. Probably the same gas that they tried to use for, um, uh, what's his face? Um, Soldier Boy. So, she gets gassed, and then she wakes up, chained and stuff like that, somewhere in an unknown location, and he is captured. And then the shapeshifter, unfortunately, yeah, she uh, pretty much um, sleeps with uh, Huey. They make love. Uh, she even wore um, the costume, right? She somehow, I guess, like it when the shapeshifter morphs into them, they have their memories or whatever of, of that person they they take form of, which is a part of the the, the touch or whatever. So I guess she she knows about the thing with the the step by step thing. She uses that, you know, to wear the costume and everything. They you know, they make love. And then um, she then, uh, what you might call, um, has access to the safe, puts into the code, pulls out a laptop, and walks away. So that's pretty much how it ends. But not before you know we see Annie realize, and then we realize that she was kidnapped, right? So that's pretty much it. That is um, essentially all of the things on my notes. So. That who knows with Annie? I mean, she she'll probably she'll probably get out of it somehow, and of course, um, she will be able to get her light, her photo uh, photokinesis or photokinetic powers back, and um, rips out of the chains, and then the virus gets made or extracted once again. Um. Which I believe that was also extracted from the sheep, right? At least one of the sheep. Um, I don't know if it was like modified or re-engineered or whatever with the glucose, whatever the hell, right? Um, was there anything else I was leaving out? Really, no. Um, that, that's most of it. At least the most important parts, anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows what will happen to Firecracker and Homelander, right? Um, 
yeah, the only thing I'm like kind of leaving now is like, yeah, Homelander tells Firecracker to go fuck off or whatever, <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, all important bits have been mentioned. Some theories have been corrected. I thought I thought Sage was still going to be around, but she got let go. Um, and oh yeah, so I thought I did think of a theory that Ashley was going to like somehow fight Huey or something. But yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't think she will actually will take some part of fight uh, in a final battle in season five. You know, I think she's just like going back and forth between the good side and the bad side because of the fear. Um, she just, you know, we even see a picture of Ashley like she was, you know, she's just. Uh, just free and young and traveled around the world it looked like um yeah so even for someone like her you kind of feel something right it's like uh, yeah okay but yeah we'll see we'll definitely see about what's going to be um the finale for season 4 I definitely cannot wait, you know. Um, a lot of good setups, right, with Butcher. Uh, oh, yeah, so Butcher, oh, yeah. Very important here, I forgot to almost mention. Butcher collapses at the bar. So, yeah, th this whole tumor thing is really getting to him now. He, look, he looked like shit. He, like, gradually started to look like shit. He looks even, he looks fucked up. Um, but not before saying like, yeah, you know, you lost because um, Ryan, he's a he's a kid that I have a lot of fate in. Call him, calls him a cunt or anything, something like that. And then he collapses, and Joe is left smiling, like he's the he's the last one smiling for the scene. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So who knows, right? If Butcher is going to be around for for um, the final episode, I think he's hospitalized and maybe breaks out of the hospital escapes from the hospital um, or probably gets another recommendation or something at the very least to be like hey you know you need to just relax right or whatever even though he only has so much time left but we'll see We'll see about uh, episode 8. I definitely cannot wait. And we still have one more season after that. So. There has been talk about. Um, by one of the actors right. That he wants to see. Um, season 5. To wrap up. But also leading into. A movie that will actually wrap up everything. So I don't know if that's a serious thing. I don't know if it's just like a talk that he, you know, he that, that just he wishes to see, but I don't think it's anything. Out of it. I think season five will be the final thing. And uh, we still have not seen uh, Kate and Jonathan. They just kind of just fucked off. You know, maybe that's for uh, Gen V season two. What they're doing, meanwhile, right? So. And then maybe season five will just like wrap up everything, right? But I think there's still, I think there is still going to be some spinoffs after that. But that's pretty much it. So that's it. Thank you very much. What do you guys think? Um, right. Obviously, uh, if you stuck around all the way to uh, through the spoilers, thank you very much. And yeah, what do you guys uh, think of the of the of, of episode seven with the spoilers and everything? Please. Leave it down below. Um, obviously, you know, uh, be a little careful, you know, as maybe some people uh, have not seen it just yet, but whatever. Anyways, thank you very much. I cannot wait for episode 8. I'll definitely make, it, uh, make a video out of that one because it's encompassing everything, right? Give it a rating and all. So, thank you very much. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Sean out.